Yeah, I don't think there's a chance it will, Joe. And it's by now the same and a kind of tired trick. They cooperate to an extent he has here. And by the way, it looks like from what the committee said that he somehow got $200,000 from a source without disclosing it, funneled it through a 501c4 and used it for a campaign. Come on January 6th, come on January 6th. He cooperates to a point and then, oh no, not my financial records, which could reveal this. He runs to court and the same as Meadows there, this is now the 10th. And what do they say? Not much. It's the same tired argument, no legislative purpose or First Amendment violation. It's all they've got, but it's their only way to try to get at a third party. It's all they can do when the same with Meadows, who they're, they're getting at phone records, is go to a court and say, stop this third party. But they have really very poor and tired arguments that have essentially no chance of prevailing, might buy a few weeks, but it's their only play once it's, oh, no, not a third party record. I, I wouldn't do that. Phil, we know the former president, Donald Trump, he's trying to get the Supreme Court to stop the National Archives mm -hmm. from releasing White House records to the January 6th committee. The House panel is urging the Supreme Court respond to that request. What more can you tell us about that? Where do you think that goes from here? Well, clearly, the former president is hoping that the Supreme Court uh, will be on his side, in part because he installed three of those nine uh, justices uh, during his presidency. Trump has a very transactional view uh, of the judiciary and, in particular, of the Supreme Court. And he believes that because he uh, nominated these individuals to be uh, justices of the highest court of the land, that they owe him a favor or two or three. Uh, and so I think he's counting on the court to intervene here uh, to have his back and keep him from keep, keep the National Archives rather from releasing the document from the White House that Trump doesn't want this committee to have. Uh, but what we've seen, uh, you know, over the years that with the court is that they don't uh, make their decisions based on transactional politics. They make their decisions based on their interpretation uh, of the law and the arguments that are presented. Harry, let's get your expert opinion. Do you expect the Supreme Court to respond to that request? How do you expect the court to respond? So first, when is the first big question? And the parties are pushing, Congress is pushing for them to do it at their January 14th conference, which would be very quick. If they take the case, it's on ice as far as the committee is concerned past the midterms. If they don't, then they're, they're able to move forward on the subpoena and I think I consider it a toss up. A lot of people think it's a foregone conclusion. The court will take it. Uh, they need four votes to take it. I get to three pretty easy, Joe, but not the fourth. If I were a betting man and I'm not, I would say they do not take it. But the more important question is, will they do it quickly? And that would mean that we would have a decision by the end of January.